Well, hello 1P and welcome to the first lesson of your new unit on proportional reasoning. Uh, today we're going to talk about fractions, exactly what a fraction is and how to change between fractions and decimals and vice versa. So what is a fraction? A fraction compares pieces you have to the pieces that would be a whole thing. So for instance, if we cut a pizza into eight slices, each slice is said to be one eighth. So here I've got our green pizza, looks yummy, huh? Cut into eight pieces. Now each, since it's eight pieces, this one here we say is one piece out of a total of eight pieces. Now fractions, we can have some fractions that are the same. I'm going to show you this other piece of pizza, this pizza here, that instead of cutting it into eight pieces, I've cut it into four pieces. And I want you to notice here with this one, that if I have one of one fourth, right? This is one piece out of four pieces. Okay, that's what this means. One piece out of four pieces. Um, it would be the same thing. Let's take these pieces here from the eighth. Um, I can hide that underneath. Actually, let's put them over here. And just put them beside. And I'm just going to show you that if I take this one quarter, it exactly fits over top of those two eighths. So what we have here is two out of eight pieces and one out of four pieces and those two things are actually equivalent. They're, they cover the same amount of space. Two pieces out of eight and one piece out of four are exactly the same thing. Now what I just did there was put um, get them into a common denominator basically um, or I could get them into a common denominator by taking a look and seeing what is the ratio here or what is the multiplication factor? Uh, and it's actually easier to go back the other direction. If I multiply 4 by 2, I get 8. So I multiply 1 by 2, and I get 2. Now that's equivalent fractions, and we're going to be working on that tomorrow. Uh, today we're just going to talk about um, a decimal being equivalent to a fraction. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about these four pieces, because quarters is something that you deal with uh, when you're talking about money. And most people understand money more than anything else. So if we're talking about quarters, what's a quarter worth in money? Well, it's worth 25 cents. And what is 25 cents in terms of a dollar? Well, in terms of a dollar, 25 cents is 0.25 of a dollar. So that's those two things are the same thing and it's easiest in quarters. Now the easiest way to change from a fraction to a decimal is simply to divide the numerator by the denominator. Uh, and I'm going to pull up my calculator and show you just that. If I take 1, which is the top of the fraction, and divide it by the bottom of the fraction, I get 0.25, which is the quarter. And I started with a quarter just because that's something that we're so used to working with because it's 25 cents and 0.25 of a dollar. Um, and we actually call it a quarter because it's a quarter of a dollar. There are four quarters to make up one complete dollar. So you use fractions every day. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. And this says changing a fraction to a decimal. And I've already told you how to do that. So here's my pull tab. And when I pull it out, it says the rule is divide the numerator by the denominator. So that's all we're going to do. If I want to figure out what 4 sevenths is as a, uh, as a decimal, I take 4 and divide it by 7. And 4 divided by 7, if we bring out my calculator, 4 divided by 7 equals, oh, and it's a biggie, 0 0.571428571428, and then it repeats itself. This whole string of numbers repeats itself. Now you'll find that with any fraction, that when you turn it into a decimal, 
either it's eventually going to repeat itself or it's going to stop altogether like one quarter did. One quarter changed into 0.25. Um, this one repeats itself. Now let's go to the next one. This one's a mixed number. So this one says I have two holes and one sixth. So let's think of this in terms of pizza again. What this actually means is that I have two whole pizzas and then um, my last pizza is cut into six pieces and I only have one of those pieces left over. So that's what this mixed number actually means. Now how can I change that into a decimal? Let's pull out our little tab here to see how we can change it into a decimal. And it's not a whole lot harder. The rule is keep the whole number for it in front of the decimal point, then divide the numerator by the denominator. So we can start by saying, I know I'm going to have a 2 in front of the decimal point, and then I take 1 and divide it by 6 to get 0.16 repeated. So we need a 1 and a 6, and the 6 is going to repeat. And to show a repeating digit, we can either put a dot over it, or in the case of many repeating digits, we put a bar over it. So how about comparing fractions? Place fractions in order of smallest to largest. Check you are right by turning them into decimals. So we're going to have a quick look at these things and see if we can figure out which is going to be smallest and which is going to be largest. Now first of all, um, I've got two negatives. So I know that the negatives have to be really small. And then the three other numbers, uh, I don't know what order they're going to go in, but they're all positive. So I'm going to put them over here in the positives. So let's deal with the negatives first. Um, this one is a mixed number and this one is an improper fraction. So it might help if I could think about what this improper fraction means. So this improper fraction, 3 goes into 7 two times because 3 times 2 is 6 and then I have 1 left over. So this is negative 2 and 1 third. So now it might be a little bit easier to compare these two numbers. I got negative 2 and 3 quarters and negative 2 and a third. Which one is more negative? Which one goes farther in the hole? Uh, well you can see they both have the negative 2 so that's not going to be very helpful. What about the 3 quarters versus 1 third? Well if you think about it 3 quarters is very close to being 4 quarters which is 1 whole and 1 third is much closer to being 0 thirds. So it looks like this one here is smaller than this one here, or it's more negative, more further in the hole. So now let's think about the other three. One half, 27 fifths, and 5 eighths. So one half, 27 fifths, and 5 eighths. 27 fifths is an improper fraction. Remember what an improper fraction means? It means that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. If the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then we have some whole numbers that just we're just not seeing them. They're part of that fraction. So this is actually bigger. And if you think about it, 5 goes into 27 five times. So I've got five whole things in this one. So that's my last one. Now, between 1 half and 5 eighths, um, which one is bigger? Well, what's half of 8? Because that's we can change this into something to think, what is half of 8? Well, 4 is half of 8. So these two things are the same. So which one's bigger, 4 eighths or 5 eighths? Well, 4 eighths is definitely not bigger than 5 eighths. If I cut a piece of pizza into 8 pieces and I have 4 and somebody else has 5, I definitely have fewer pieces. So we've got this in the right order right now. And it says check them by changing them into decimals. I'm not going to do this here, but you could be able, you could go ahead and do it and change them all into decimals just by dividing the numerator by the denominator and then seeing if your decimals get bigger. Now, changing decimals to fractions. I want to change 1.002 to a fraction and I've got a few steps for you to follow here. Step 1, take the number after the decimal place and use it as a numerator. So the number after the decimal, and we're not going to put the zeros in here, the number after the decimal is 2. What's the next step? 
The next step says, count the number of decimal places and find the power of 10 with that many zeros. So we've got one, two, three decimal places. So I need a power of 10 with that many zeros. By a power of 10, I mean 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, et cetera, et cetera, things with zeros on the end. So I need a one followed by one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros. Uh, which is the thousands. And then step three says, use the power of 10 as the denominator and reduce to lowest terms with a calculator. So you may have a calculator that has fractions on it. If not, just see if there's a number that goes into both of those. I just happen to know that since the bottom is even, they're both divisible by two. And so what I have to do is divide the top by two and divide the bottom by 2 in order to get it into lowest terms. So when I divide the top by 2, I get 1. When I divide the bottom by 2, I get 500. And so this is my answer in lowest terms. If you have a calculator that has a fraction button, feel free to use it to do lowest terms. Now let's try these ones. Express as a fraction form in lowest terms. So here, I'm going to do this one. Here's in fractional form. Now, I've got this 3 out front. I'm just going to leave it as a 3. And now this 5 here is the numerator. And the denominator, I have to put a 1 and then count the decimal places. One decimal place, two decimal places means I need 1, 0, 2, 0. Now, I have to reduce the fraction to lowest terms. Does something go into both 5 and 100? I hope you know that that's 5. So 5 goes into 5 one time, so I have to divide the top by 5, and then I have to divide the bottom by 5 as well. And 100 divided by 5 is 20. So here is, this is the same thing as what we started with, 3.05. Now this one here has no number out front. So I just need to write 1, 2, 5 down, all of the digits after the decimal point. And then I go over and I need a 1 followed by 1, 2, 3 places after the decimal point. 1, 2, 3. Now does something go into both 125 and 1000? Well, you might be able to find um, smaller ones, but 5 will go into it and so will 25. 25 goes into 125 five times, and 25 goes into 1,000. If you don't know, pull out your calculator, and if you're trying to find what something goes into it, you put that first. You need the 1,000 first. So 1,000 divided by 25 will tell you how many times it goes into, 25 goes into 1,000, and that's 40. So 5 over 40. Now there's still something that go, that's going to go into both of those, and that's 5. I can put 5 into 5 and 5 into 40. So what I mean by putting it into, I mean I'm going to divide both top and bottom by the same number to reduce to lowest terms. 5 goes into 5 once and into 40 eight times. So 0.125 is the decimal equivalent of 1 eighth. And then this one, 8 and 75 over one, two decimal places, so one and then one, two zeros. So eight and 75 over 100. Now this one I'm hoping you'll recognize from your terms with money. 75 can be thought of as 75 cents, and you know that you get 75 cents when you have three quarters. So this 0.75 reduces to three quarters. And that's the end of our video for today.